It's a big victory for everyone involved, but the work has just begun. Now authorities need to figure out if these bombing suspects had any help. Michael Leiter is an NBC counterterrorism analyst and served as the director of National Counterterrorism Center under Presidents Bush and Obama. Michael, good to see you. Morning, Matt. So, so he's under federal custody right now. He has not been Mirandized, which means he hasn't been read those rights we've seen on TV and in the movies for all those years that are a normal part of any criminal proceeding. What leeway does that give the federal government? What does it not allow them to do? The, the federal government has a fair bit of latitude at the beginning uh, to ask him questions that relate to directly to the public safety about other bombs, about other plotters. Now, this is all judicial doctrine, so there's no clear standards on how long that would last. But that period should go into today and maybe even tomorrow. At some point, he's going to have to be presented to a U.S. magistrate uh, and hear the charges. And from there, he'll get back into the system. But the hope would be that he'll talk even if he is Mirandized by the FBI. All right, so wait, this public safety exception, and I, and I get that. It sounds great. Are there other bombs out there? Are there other accomplices? But does it, can it, is it going to take a smart defense lawyer to say, wait a second, I challenge this, because let me read you the tweet from the Boston police after he was taken into custody. It says, captured, the hunt is over, the search is done, the terror is over. Is that a problem? Well, it... It, that would be used by a defense attorney to argue that there really was no public safety threat. But I think in light of the circumstances we've had, the numerous improvised explosive devices, the huge gunfire, I, I think that the government is going to get a fair bit of latitude here. The other piece we have to remember is Miranda only affects the statements he makes and whether or not they're admissible in court. I think that the FBI will likely have a very, very strong case, even if he says nothing at all, based purely on the surveillance tape statements of witnesses, and the forensic evidence. Michael, we're going to have you on later. We're going to talk about the radicalization of these brothers, how and when it may have happened. Michael Leiter, thanks very much. Thank you, Matt. Uh, Savannah, you're a lawyer. So what do you think? The government on firm legal ground here? It is, but as Michael just pointed out, this is a limited exception to the Miranda rule. So it, it, there's no bright line. The court has never said, okay, that public safety emergency only lasts for X amount of time. It would be something a later court would look at and say, did officers have a reasonable and objective belief that there existed a public safety emergency and exigency that would allow them to continue questioning an American citizen right. without reading him his Miranda? In, in this time, he has no access to a lawyer, correct? That is correct. Another open question. What if somebody invokes the right to a lawyer before being read the Miranda rights? Okay, the quarrels exception, this public safety exception would still exist. The reason this matters is because once someone has read his Miranda rights, at any point, if he says unambiguously, I want a lawyer, the court has said the questioning must stop. You can't approach them. You cannot in any way that could be interpreted as interrogation right. talk to that suspect. And the suspect. question is, is a 19-year-old suspect who's in medical disarray going to think to say, I want a lawyer? Let me just ask you one other question. There are some who've wondered whether this is actually federal jurisdiction, whether this might not be a state of Massachusetts situation, a simple murder case or multiple murder cases. I have to tell you, Matt, today you're impressing me as a potential defense <laughs> lawyer because you brought up a couple of points that I think any defense lawyer would. Isn't this strictly a Massachusetts state matter? And this is significant here. Massachusetts does not have the death penalty. The federal courts do have the death penalty. I think there will be a strong case for federal jurisdiction. It won't take that much of a hook for the prosecutors to say this is a terrorism case. It belongs in the federal courts. Let me just say, as a veteran of the wars of Washington, this issue of whether he's called somebody who's a suspect in the criminal justice system as opposed to somebody who's treated as an enemy combatant, and by the way, an American citizen may be treated as an right. enemy combatant, will be a political hot potato. I don't think there's any question how the Obama administration will come down on it. All right. We move on. Yes, we do.